old digital mixing desk for about 500 bucks. Behringer XR18 plus X-Touch Mini. Coolest plus mixing station. Coolest thing ever. Stay tuned. So I've been making some videos recently talking about the Behringer X-Touch Mini as a controller for um, Behringer digital mixers, specifically the XR18 because it's the one that I have, but it would work with other ones, obviously. Um, I cannot, I cannot express enough how excited and how cool it is um, using mixing station with a digital mixer and this Behringer X-Touch Mini. This is the best, the coolest, best little investment ever. Um, I'm someone who was looking at digital mixers and, you know, getting a digital desk and more like dreaming about it because, you know, they're anywhere between like 1500 and, you know, and beyond 1500 to 2500 for, you know, an entry level decent one, $1,200 at least. Anyway, um, this thing is 70 dollars the behringer xr18 is a little over 400 dollars right now all of behringer's stuff all their mixers and stuff just came down significantly in price for whatever reason i've seen some speculation online and in other places as to why but um doesn't matter it came down a whole bunch in price it was i think over 800 dollars when i bought it um, the XR18, which is now the price of the X32. All their mixers are basically halved in price. This thing in the XR18 allows you to have an entire mixing desk, like, like you would have with the X32, you know, producer, compact, you know, full desk, whatever version you wanted. You now can do that with this and with just one of the X-Air or other rack-mounted Behringer mixers. And it is crazy. Um, so now for, you know, roughly $500, you can get all of the same capability pretty much. Um, you do have to make a few, a few concessions, obviously, given what you're working with. But it is plenty of control. Plenty of control for the average person. Um, for what I'm doing, it is plenty of control. And I'm going to make a video showing how I did a bunch of this stuff. Um but I just wanted to rant a little bit um, about how awesome this is. Of course, this is assuming you already have a laptop or other portable computer that you'd want to bring with you to a show live. Um, I've considered, I've thought about um, doing this with the Raspberry Pi. You can run Mixing Station on a Raspberry Pi, as far as I know, and that would be an even cheaper entry point if you don't already have a laptop but <laughs> the specs required from a laptop to run these programs is very minimal and you can also run it on a tablet i'm probably preaching to the choir if you're already using mixing station but if you're not using mixing station it is the best thing ever if you're someone who likes to have full control full con configurability and nerd out about stuff um, it's not that complicated to get involved in, but you can dive deep. You can dive as deep as you want to. Um, so it's really good for pretty much anyone except for someone who maybe is just using digital mixers for the first time. But in any other case, let me just go into it a little bit. Mixing station is awesome because you can configure everything exactly how you want it literally everything down to any detail. You can make a button for anything. You can move it and have it laid out however you want. Um, you can have the, f um, you can have the channel strips show you what inf whatever information you want. You can make a simple, you can make a simple one if someone other than you is gonna be using it and you don't want them to fuck anything up. You can just have one with just, just levels, you know, or you can have it with the full information and full buttons and full control that you want um, or that someone more skilled than you can take advantage of. Um, so that's cool. Also, it's really not that complicated to understand. It takes a little bit of time messing with it, but it's 
once you play around with it a little bit, it's pretty straightforward how to do everything, and there's plenty of videos out there if you get stuck or have questions. Um, they also have all the support information on their website, and it's um, pretty easy to navigate through. Um, as far as cons configuring MIDI, it's really straightforward too. I tried using the Behringer software, the X-Touch um, or XR Edit um, software for configuring MIDI, and it was, you have to know, there, there's more to know about MIDI. It's not just choosing what buttons do what. You really have to kind of program it, and it was just, it was kind of annoying. Um, and I'm not someone who really knows that much about MIDI. Um, I was just trying to configure some buttons, so. Um, I did not have to do a deep dive into MIDI configuration and the ins and outs of all of that. Though you can control all of those things with Mixing Station. It's not required to, to do what I did or do. Um, I also use the OSI Mini. There's a couple of videos on YouTube of that's like some proprietary product um, used for MIDI mapping. And it promises to be even easier than what I did with Mixing Station because you can kind of just pick the parameter and click the button, and now those two things are connected. Um, but it doesn't give you as many options for configuring as as I had hoped. It's not infinitely configurable in the way that Mixing Station is. It's kind of limited in your choices of how you can map things and lay it out. Um, so, so, yeah. I didn't like that too much. Um, and you can't really do action swaps, which I'll get into later, but... Um, not only that, with Mixing Station, whatever presets you come up with for your layout, for um, your MIDI um, controller, for um, anything, you can't, and your layers, for anything, you can save it all to the program, to your computer, you can, you can save it within the program, you can save it separately on a file on your computer, and you can share it to your account online with Mixing Station, and then you or anyone else that you decide to share it with can pull it down from the cloud and load it onto another computer. So if you map it out on your desktop at home, and then you get something that you like, um, that you've messed around with for a while, and you're like, okay, cool, I'm ready to use this in another location, um, you can pull it down from the cloud onto your laptop and just, it's ready to go. You don't have to fuck with it at all. And I can share what I have, um, my, you know, the configurations that I've come up with. I can share that. If you are interested, please let me know in the comments and you can access what I have done here without having to do any of the work. And then you can tweak it from there if you want to. Um, not only that, but it works on, uh, well, Mixing Station has apps for PC, tablet, and phone, both iOS and Android. Um, also, the MIDI works on PC and tablet. Um, you can connect MIDI to, I haven't tried this with an Android phone, but you can connect MIDI to um, an iPhone. I, it gave me an error of, like, there wasn't enough power to support it, even when I had an external um, adapter power source that was powering both my phone and that. For some reason, I was still getting that error message. Maybe I could get a different adapter, or maybe one of you guys knows why it wasn't working. It did It did recognize it. It just, um, it just didn't like the amount of power that this thing was drawing, which isn't a crazy amount. I looked in the specs. I forget exactly how much it is, but apparently it was too much to use with the iPhone, even with an external power source. Um, but I used the exact same power source when I plugged it in to a um, iPad, and that worked just fine. Um, but it did need to be plugged into the power. When I had it not plugged into the power, it gave me the same error message. But when I plugged into the power, it worked on the iPad, but not with the iPhone. Um, I haven't tried this with Android yet. I'm sure that it would work on an Android tablet, and the odds that it would work on an Android phone are higher in my mind. But I don't know. I haven't actually tried that. Let me know if that works, because that would be cool. I would like to know that. Um, let's see what else. That's pretty much it. I am going to get into, I'm going to show you the most recent layout that I have. Um, and I'm going to make a video or maybe a couple videos on how I actually, the process of actually laying it out and how 
um, the methodology of how you have to organize things um, in order to achieve this layout or something similar. Um, but I'm very excited about it. I can't, I can't talk about it enough, rave about it enough. I needed someone to nerd out to, so here you go, YouTube. Like, subscribe. Please reach out with questions, thoughts, concerns. If you have any answers to any of the questions that I have, um, I would appreciate that back and forth. So, yeah.